hi everyone hope you all doing well welcome back to our channel in this video i am going to showcase how you can access uh, data collection tool through microsoft azure rest api and i'm going to show you both the methods the oauth 2.0 authorization code flow as well as the client credential flow now when it comes to accessing azure rest api there is already a dedicated playlist which has been created on the channel itself if you want you can go ahead and watch this playlist because there are many different components that i have covered already and i'm just going to use them as a reference point for this particular video okay so the very first thing that you need to access dcr through api is a azure ad application so i'm going to click on app registration and then i'm going to click on new registration and here i'm going to create a new application and let's just name it as concepts work dcr and then api okay and then here i have to select this option of web and here i'll select https local host and then i'll click on register okay Now, the reason why this option is selected and what is the purpose of uh, this application is something that has been covered in a lot more detail in that particular playlist. So I assume that you have seen that first and then watching this particular video. Now, the very first thing that we need is client ID itself. OK, this is the most important aspect uh, for this particular application, which we have created. So our end goal is to use Postman and use this particular application to access Azure REST API of data collection rule. Perfect, so I've copied this value from here, which is my client ID, and let me just keep it in a notepad. And now the next thing that we need is client secret. I'll click on this option of new client secret inside this section of clients, uh, sorry, certificates and secrets. And I'll click on add and I'll copy this value. This is my client secret. Now, the next thing that we need is authorize endpoint and token endpoint of my tenant. So for that, I'm going to click on overview and then I'll click on endpoint. And I'll copy this one, which says V1. OK, so the first one is authorization endpoint. Which should come here. And the other one is token endpoint. Which is this one. OK, now the next thing is to go ahead and create the actual endpoint or look for the endpoint that we have to access, which is for data collection rule. So now I'm searching data collection rule and assume that this is the one that I have to access. OK, so I'll click on JSON view and then I'll copy this resource ID field from here and paste it here. Now, in my second video, I have also shown how you can create the URLs uh, which are required for the endpoint. To be accessed so as of now i have just copied the actual resource id however there is a prefix that has to be added which is management.azure.com which is this one and then i'll remove this additional forward slash and at the end i have to type question mark api hyphen version and then the value that we see on the console which is this one which is 2022-06-01. Okay. So this is the endpoint that I have to reach with this particular application by using client credential flow as well as uh, the OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow where there will be a user interaction. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to my machine where I have installed Postman. Now, there is something which is very important and that is moreover related to accessing Azure REST APIs itself and that is there is an additional kind of a value that has to be sent in body when you are initiating the request. However, let's say if you have installed Postman and you are not signed in, then you will not get that particular option. So as of now, just keep this 
console as a reference point i'll pause the video i'll sign in with my account and then what you will see that this console is getting changed now here you can add a resource but the issue is that this gets appended in the first get request itself which the postman is creating which shouldn't be the case because this has to be sent in the body so i'll pause the video i'll sign in with my account and then i'll show you the difference perfect so i'm signed in right now and as you can see it's showing my account here now the very first thing that i have to do is to click on this option which says new and then click on this option which says http perfect so let's say if i go ahead and try to reach now the endpoint okay uh, which we have just created which is this one i'll copy this value and i'll come back here and i'll click on send so the expected outcome is 401 you can see it is giving me authentication failed because there is no token that exists for this particular request okay now we have to click on this option which says authorization from here i will select oauth 2.0 and here i'll select uh, i'll scroll down and yeah now here we have to populate all the details so i'm going to name it as let's say azure token okay now i'll go back to my notepad and i'll start populating the details so the very first thing that i need is the authorization endpoint which I will be copying and pasting here where it says authorization URL. And then it also asks for callback URL, which will be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash local host. Now this is the same value that we have given in the reply URL field of our application. So let's say if I go back to my Azure AD and show you that value quickly it's the application name was concepts work hyphen dcr hyphen api and i can click on manifest and if i'll scroll down you can see this is the reply url so whatever value exists here you have to give it in the postman and call back url field which is this one now the next endpoint which is required is token endpoint so all i can do is i can just remove this authorize with token that's it okay so if i'll come back to my notepad let me just show you this as well so the only difference between authorization endpoint and token endpoint is these two keywords at the end rest everything will be same now i need client id so i'll come back to my machine and this is my client id and here i'm going to give the client secret which is this one copy and i'll come back and i'll give it here perfect now if you see this particular section this is something which has been changed and this was not the scenario when the account was not logged in okay so in this token request section you have to add a parameter which is resource and then the value should be management.core.windows.net okay this is the value that you have to give now i'm going to click on this option which says get new access token let me just verify everything yeah authorization code auth url yes perfect everything is in place now i'm going to click on this option which says get new access token now the expected behavior is that i will get a sign in prompt because i am using oauth 2.0 authorization code flow okay that's exactly what i was using that's the reason i'm getting this prompt for user interaction perfect so i'm signed in right now and uh, what you can see i'm getting a prompt a consent prompt for this particular application i'll click on accept and the expected behavior is 
that it should fail because practically speaking no permission has been given for user impersonation which is required for azure okay so now what i'll do is i'll come back to my console i'll click on this option of api permission and then i'll click on this option which says add permission and azure service management user impersonation add permission and then i'll click on this option of grant admin consent for concepts work perfect you can see this permission has now been granted now all i have to do is come back here and click on this option of get new access token and you can see the authentication is completed i have the access token now and i can click on use token now since my account which i have used has the owner permission for the entire subscription the moment i'll go ahead and click on send now the expected outcome is i should get the response and as you can see i can access dcr from here itself now this is something that you should be observing very carefully because we are using these methods to even customize this okay so the method that i have used right now was oauth 2.0 authorization code flow however i can go ahead and assign a permission to my application in my subscription so that it can access this dcr without any user authentication as well okay so let me now show you that as well so i'll come back to my postman and i'll change this value to client credential and i'll click on get new access token you can see i have got a new access token and i'm using the one which i have just requested and now if i'll click on send i'm getting an authorization failed because this application as an entity is not authorized to access dcr in my previous example it was happening because i was using an, an account which has owner permission and the subscription right so now let's go ahead and assign a permission to this particular application a permission in my azure subscription so that it can view all the resources okay so let's go to the dcr first and let's say data collection rule and this dcr exists in this particular resource group which is concepts work hyphen sentinel okay so i'll click on this option of access control iam and then i'm going to add my application here i'll click on add role assignment and to begin with i will only give this service principal the privilege to let's say read all the resources okay so i'll select the first one and i'll click on next and i'll click on select members and here i'm going to search for my application which is concepts work concepts work dcr hyphen api i'll click on select i'll click on next next review and assign so as of now the reader permission has been applied to this particular application at the resource group level so which means any resource that exists in this particular resource group can be queried directly with the postman with this particular application without any user interaction okay so let's do something let's request a token again i'll click on proceed and i'll click on use token and this time let's just rename it or to be absolutely sure about it let's just delete all the tokens which we have requested in the past and let's just name it as app token okay and let's get a new access token perfect client credential is selected get new access token proceed use this particular token and now send the request so now you can see i'm getting the response without any user interaction okay now let's say i want to make a change in this particular dcr and if i try to send let's say a put request or a patch request it will fail 
because again this application is not having the privilege to make any change okay so it will fail i know this but i'm just showing you that we are again getting the same message of authorization getting failed perfect so now the last thing that we have to see is how to access this data with the help of uh, powershell so i'll come back to my powershell iec console and let me just move it to the right so that i can zoom in and show you data in more detail so i'll just expand this particular section and i'll increase the size so the very first thing that you need is again the endpoint which has to be queried so that you can get the token endpoint saved and then you have to populate the valid client id and client credential so the one which was there in the script is the older one so let's just replace this and and i'm replacing the client id and then i'll go ahead and copy the client secret and i'll replace it here perfect http local host then client credential management.core.windows.net and it is this now here where it says the endpoint i'll remove the one which was there before and add this particular url okay so you can see if now with the same wallet token i'll initiate a get request okay let me just remove this from body and now click on send you can see i'm getting the response expected behavior is whatever i was doing from postman now i'm doing it from powershell and now if i use this script which is a very small script a couple of lines just to request the dcr data we should get a response okay so there is a typo in the uri we have to replace this active rule alert with dcr okay now if i click on run i should get dcr data and perfect this is this is it that's exactly what we were requesting now the reason behind not talking about all these different components and lines and different things mentioned here is very obvious that everything is already covered in the azure rest api playlist so if you have not seen them please go ahead and watch it okay so this was all about uh, how to access dcr uh, with the help of an application through postman because now i will show you how you can add the customization of kql queries in the dcr itself and we'll get started with windows so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time